I came from Burma. It's now called Myanmar. I was born in Southern Sudan. I came from Iraq. Liberia, West Africa. I have to run with my family when I was three because we are from the ethnic background, a Korean, and being prosecuted by our identity. Uh, there is uh, racism and persecution uh, for Mandarin community, and it was very hard and um, very hard time. When I moved to the north in Khartoum, the things got so complicated to a point where, you know, if you were not Muslim and Arabic, you couldn't, for example, go to uni. You had to change your name if you were a Southern Sudanese. You had to change your name and you had to accept being a Muslim. Everything that you think of that a child should have, my father gave it to us until the war came in Liberia in 1989 and everything went wrong. We end up moving to Thailand as a refugee. We left Iraq and left everything in that time, uh, 2004, uh, went to the Jordan. And I was only nine years old. I lived in refugee for 13 years until I got resettled um, to Australia. And we all fled into different directions where we lived for 16 years. And in the 16 years, we spent time in the cities and the camp. The refugee life in the camp is not very um, good. We were scared of our life every day. Uh, the, the first camp in Ethiopia, Itang refugee camp, was, I remember, I was a kid. And what I can remember is that it was very militarized. There was a lot of tribal tension that from time to time led to fighting and people shooting at each other. So we have about like 43,000 refugees on this camp. So it was very, very crowded with um, refugees and the facility there was not enough at all. And women and children were very much at risk. We was beaten, we was raped, a lot of violence was going on. And women have to engage herself into surviving sex, where to provide for their families. The place where we were put in is only four kilometers away from the border. So every summer there were offensive from the Burmese military in, against the Korean. And we saw that every single day, do you hear about the bombing, the, um, the gun fires? Um, you never feel safe. In Kenya, the situation was different. Uh, there was a lot of tension between local people and the refugees because the local people were very poor um, and they didn't see why refugees were getting all this support and they were not getting anything. And so that, that really created a lot of tension. The Kenyan people saw us as just refugees and next to nothing. During that time, we just made, you know, hope that something might change. But at the end, we realized that our hope to return back to our, our country is diminished. And then we had to find another place to be, to get a security, to, to, to live in a secure life. So my parents decided to migrate to um, Australia. We applied for a refugee resettlement. Uh, Australia is different from, you know, uh, all the places I've been. My accent was very heavy uh, and that didn't make things uh, easy. When I was here, I have a little bit of English, doesn't know about the culture. Um, very scared because of the environment is very different where you come from. What I did was going to uni. I came and within two weeks I went to uni and I think that did help me a lot because my whole focus was uni and studying and learning. I found a future for my kids here in Australia. They um, complete the school. For me, my opportunity is very, very big. It's not, not uh, it's like in Iraq, there is a limit age for, uh, for learning. And education become my main goal to achieve. So I, even though I was 24, I went back to high school and 
to finish my HSC. My life now in Australia is a big difference of the time I live in the refugee camps. Because here I'm free, I have freedom of speech, freedom of everything I can do. So I did pursue my nursing degree and at the end I, I achieved. So that's given me some um, accomplishment in my life that I never enjoyed or have it before. When people think of you as a refugee, they think you don't speak English, you know nothing, you can't communicate. But when they, people with that in their mind talk to you and then they see that you can speak to them, you can understand what they are saying. You know, I can actually engage with you as a human being, as a person. We are half dying in our country because we're having the freedom. And the first time when I came to Australia, I felt that I'm a human.